Courage and determination gifted Britain a remarkable network of railways through the 19th century, transforming life in ways thought unimaginable. Steam locomotives drew communities closer together, bulk haulage empowered great industries, manufacturers established links with distant markets. But revolutions come and go. The 20th century brought another one, when the convenience and freedom of road transport signalled a diminishing role for both rural and urban railways. Many succumbed to new economic realities and political skullduggery. The reshaping of the network through the 50s and 60s left the landscape littered with thousands of disused structures. The majority are mundane, serving only to remind us of what we've lost. But a sizeable collection presents strategic opportunities as the next transport revolution emerges from our exhaust fumes. In March, the government published its consultation document on plans to decarbonise transport. It sets out six priorities, including an exploration of how to promote walking and cycling as the first choice for short journeys. Over the next two years, an investment of £1.2 billion is projected on infrastructure and other active travel projects. It's intended to promote behavioural change. There are many perceived barriers to cycling and safety is of course uh, the highest one. You know, we want to encourage people to take up uh, walking and cycling uh, instead of using the car. Uh, for everyday trips and for short journeys and we believe the best way to do that is to provide safe infrastructure. Uh, that can involve segregating from cars and reallocating road space but it can also be about providing really good and high quality off-highway routes such as along disused railways and canal towpaths. Repurposing historic infrastructure isn't new of course but authorities are increasingly recognising its value in the context of community connectivity, health and environmental challenges. We need to get more exercise and reduce our reliance on cars. In areas still blighted by the loss of heavy industry, it's also seen as a driver for regeneration, with the Rhonda Tunnel campaign in South Wales leading that march. Yeah. Yep. The economic benefit, this could be a real tourist attraction, something in the valleys which is quite unique and as has been mentioned by the group here today, some of the spin-offs in terms of uh, the entertainment industry, whether it's the hospitality, whether it's opening a visitor centre etc. It could be a real unique selling point for South Wales Valleys. So I think it's all those sort of areas we need to start talking about and about what additionality we can bring in terms of our regeneration, our tourism funding and also the Welsh Government. Rhonda Tunnel is one of more than 3,000 disused railway structures owned by the Department of Transport and managed on its behalf by a team within Highways England. But their annual budget of around £10 million isn't spent on transforming these historic liabilities into useful assets. The team's remit is focused only on risk control. You have a little look. That's prompted a vigorous battle in West Yorkshire, where a scheme to abandon Queensbury Tunnel at a likely cost of more than £6 million is opposed by campaigners and local councils who want the structure repaired at a similar cost to host a greenway connecting the major population centres of Bradford and Halifax. The Secretary of State for Transport is showing an interest. We have to believe in it. We have to keep, uh, keep battling away. It's been an uphill struggle. It seems to us that there is a ridiculous contradiction in the Department for Transport who profess to promote cycling for all its, all its benefits and at the same time uh, a subdivision of, of that department is hell-bent on destroying this tunnel which could be part of a fantastic cycling network. Bath already has one. A hard-fought campaign there brought the opening of the Two Tunnels Greenway in 2013. It's used by an estimated 264,000 people every year, mostly for leisure, but also some commuting. According to a Sustrans study, the £4 million investment will return £13.8 million in benefits over 30 years. Boosting that sum further are four annual running race events, which in 2019 contributed £213,000 to the local economy. We've had people come from Iceland, Asia, I think we might have a couple of people coming from America as well. And as the event grows, its reputation spreads and it's drawing in all these people who come to the area, 
They come to stay overnight, they come and buy food in the shops, time in the restaurants, money on accommodation. Inevitably, people forget their shoes, so the running, sh running shops do a bit of trade the day before. Um, so it draws people here for, from far and wide. Actions will have to be quick and decisive if the government is to meet its target of achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Transport has a key role to play, with a need to grow the use of buses, trains and active travel. Getting people onto bikes as part of their daily routine involves culture change on a grand scale. That won't be possible unless we seize the opportunities offered by our extraordinary inventory of redundant infrastructure assets.